and to boast of fans. Pens. Learning algebra while also learning English is hard. Two boxes of pencils and four boxes of pens for $8. But 15-year-old Ikram is resilient with the help of his brother Mohammed and foster mom Kathy and Kent. Boy, all this pressure on you doing math on TV. But both Ikram and Mohammed Imran have endured much more difficult life-altering challenges. I was in Malaysia detention almost three years. The Malaysian government released Ikram last November. There is so bad situation. They cannot eat and cannot sleep, cannot go anywhere. Lawmakers say Ikram is the first child to ever be released from that detention camp, and he wouldn't be here without his older brother, Mohammed. I have been working with this like since 2019 because Malaysian government is like very as strong. They even like denied UNHCR to access to in detention center. Both Mohammed and Ikram grew up in Myanmar, where their family was violently pushed out as a part of the Rohingya genocide. Their biological parents are still living in a refugee camp in Bangladesh that just caught fire this week. Their parents sent Ikram and Mohammed separately to Malaysia, where they believed they could find safety and get an education, but they were wrong. They tell me, my family, we will send your son in Malaysia in a seven day. It was a lie. It took, instead of seven days, it took a five month on the boat. Mohammed said this was the darkest time After, like, of his weeks, life. People are dying in the boat and they throwing on the water. And I thought I would be the like, next one. When he got to land, he was arrested and spent a year in a Malaysian detention camp. They give a little bit food and they beat the children. And I still have like, I still have to like go to see doctor. They beat one of my toes in, in, in my leg. After being rescued by the UN, he made his way to Mercer Island in 2016 at 15 years old, where he now lives with a foster family and goes to Bellevue College. He's also now an American citizen. I feel very proud and I am really thankful for the our government. I feel like I'm really proud Rohingya American. Mohammed found out in 2019 that his brother was missing after also taking a dangerous ship voyage to Malaysia. And I find out he was located in Ipo camp in Malaysian detention center. Mohammed worked tirelessly for three years, reaching out to different organizations and lawmakers to get his brother released. That's when he heard Congresswoman Susan Del Bene would be in Malaysia as part of a trip with then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And when folks heard I was going to be in Malaysia, asked that I raise this case to government officials, to folks in the embassy. And so I did. During that trip this past August, Congresswoman Del Bene spoke directly to the Malaysian government about Ikram. The real kind of amazing thing about this case is his brother, Mohammed, and his advocacy. And three months later, he was released. All right, bye, Ikram. Made his way to Washington State, where he's now been since December. I must stay here. My, my foster family love me. Do you know what is negative times negative? And as the brothers work on more mundane tasks. Positive. Yes, that's exactly, yeah, that's correct. They have much bigger plans for the future. I want to help the Rohingya Muslim, and then I want to be doctor. And plans to fight for the rest of their family and to fight for all Rohingya people. I think it's time for us and as a human being to like do, to bring awareness for the people who are dying to be seen. And Mohammed shared with me that he has been able to contact his biological parents who are in a refugee camp in Bangladesh to tell them that he and Ikram are now together in Washington. He said his parents often get sick because of the conditions in the camp, but they told him that they don't believe they will ever get sick again because of the immense happiness they feel for their sons. So it's just a heartbreaking story, but also incredible. And we're so lucky to have them here in Washington.